it's recording, but we're going to cut it up and I'm just going to shoot this to Facebook Live. Let's see if we like it sometimes Zoom. It, it plays a little bit. <clears throat> we have been Guy Kawasaki on just a few days. I think it's in two weeks time. Oh, no, yet. Now it's okay. It's pairing. Wonderful. It pair up. Good. I'm happy about that. And we had Neil Patel as well a few days ago. And Grand Cardone is on September. I'm so happy, man. It's just like super happy to have the best of the best here in the show. Wow, you got a big lineup. <laughs> yes, man. You know, I did um I did my research very well. And sometimes and le, le, if we are talking about growth hacking or growth marketing and I cannot bring the best ones, what can I show you? No? Nothing to show. Yeah, that's true. When I was looking up Grant Cardone, I couldn't believe he was in his 60s. I'm like, what? <laughs> no way. Yes. yes. You know, he's just like super, he's like very well. And it's amazing, yeah. like 60 like something. Yeah. Yeah, he, he looks like early 50s. <laughs> mm, yes. I think he exercises a lot and he looks after, he probably have 10 people looking after his diet and his food and everything. Oh, He's yeah. such an inspiration. We, he, we are here in Spain and it's, it's not initiating yet, it's just about the initiation. We're here in Spain and US, it's very strong for us, but you know, Gran Cardon is kind of the opposite of what you would do. Okay, yeah. Leonard, we are on. I'm just going to do a small presentation and we crack in to do a few questions. Okay, thank you very much, Leonard Kim, for being here. For whoever doesn't know Leonard, just top of the mind, he has a lot of recognitions. I just would like to pop out some of them. He's a personal branding expert and a keynote speaker, which I'm going to drop the link below to see the TEDx, which is one of the most important things I've seen. Leonard is an author of Ditch the Act. He's a reveal present power of the real, um, also you great success. He's the speaker. Also, his uh, name as a, a in Forbes as a top marketing influencer. Leonard is managing a partner of Influence Tree, in a, and also he has over ten million seen ten million times and five hundred social media follows. Well, he's been working for the top companies, and we have him him today here at the Growth Market Anna Baum. Thank you very much, Leonard. Oh, anytime, Gerard. Thank you so much for having me. It's a pleasure to be here today. Wonderful. Leonard, before we started, we were talking a little bit, but I just have one question. What happened at 28 that really changed your life? In 2000, 2018 or 2008? Uh, when you were 28 years old, what happened? Oh, when I was 28 years old. So uh, it's an interesting thing if you really think about it, because much of my life up until that point was filled, filled with disappointment. Like, Every single startup I was working with kind mm. of went bankrupt. Uh, my relationships didn't go well. And I kind of went to a point where I made the decision where I wanted to kind of end it all. I'm like, you know what? What's the point of even being here anymore? If everything I'm doing isn't working, why should I keep trying? And to, uh, when I was about 28 years old, something uh, happened. I got to the point in life where I became sick and tired of being sick and tired. So I tried a few different things to really figure out what I could do to turn it around. Uh, should I go out there and apply to hundreds of jobs? That didn't really work because not a lot of people were hiring uh, or they just didn't want me. Probably that's the case. And I also went out there and tried going back to school, but that takes a lot of time and uh, resources to really get to go out there and work. And the other thing I tried was writing. And surprisingly, what ended up with writing is it picked up extremely quickly. Like uh, I wrote a post and that was May 15th. And after I wrote the post, I just sat around for a while and was like, oh yeah, I'll go read some other people's stuff. But someone on that platform, what they did is they saw my post and promoted it to a thousand people. And because they saw what I wrote and they took interest in it, it sparked a passion and it gave me permission to go out and create more. So I started writing almost every single day. And within the, uh, six months, I had 2 million reads on my content and about 3,000 followers who were reading what I was uh, writing. Uh, Quora named me a top writer. Then by the end of 2014, um, I ended up with uh, 
10 million reads and about 20,000 followers. No, I'll just continue to grow from there. I love it, man. And I think you had a lead generation company before, and now you know a lot about content. Yeah. What, 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 what is your inputs, lead generation content? Knowing both ways, I guess you were doing a lot of outbound, and mm-hmm. now that you're doing a lot of, about content, which inputs can you take outbound content? Well, if you look at outbound marketing, it's very time consuming. You have to either sit on the phone, call the person, go and email someone, come up with the script, go and discover who people are, do a lot of research on them, and really figure out how to get into the door. Then once you get into the door, the person doesn't even trust you, and then you have to go and pitch them and sell them on what you're doing. And this takes like, you know, days, if not weeks, if not months, to really go out there and get people actually interested in what you're doing. And then that whole day, you know what? It could all just go away at the last minute because someone's like, you know what? Um, yeah, I'm just going to go with someone else. And you spend all this time and effort so that you could have, what, maybe a 10% closing ratio if you're lucky. Mm. And it's like, what's the point of actually going out there and doing that? What if you could flip it the other way around? Why don't I talk about what I want to talk about? Why don't I talk about what works? Why don't I talk about how I could help you? Why don't I talk about the things that you need? And why don't I go and put that out in every single place I could and make sure it's the best content out there? So mm-hmm. when you read it, when you see it, when you watch it, you're like, you know what? I trust Leonard. I'm going to go work with Leonard. I'm going to call him. I'm going to get to know him more. But you know what? You already know everything about me. So the phone call becomes super simple. Going, hey, I love your stuff. I see what you can do. Can you do this for me? Yeah, it's this much. Cool, let's do it. And if you look at the whole entire process of how all that works, it kind of takes everything and Mm -hmm. flips it over. It's like, why am I going to have to go out there and beg to sell myself when someone else could come to me and just say, hey, here, this is Mm -hmm. what I want. (laughs) I love it, and you're saying a few words that it's like based on trust and wasting the time, and it's it's beautiful the way you're working. It's like okay, build the content, and then you can do a bound. But it's kind of like if someone recommends you, isn't it? If someone sees yeah. your content, and you know, it it has changed our life, and also, do you think they can both work together, a bound and content, or is it one or the other? Um, of course, it could always work together. Uh, so if I were to flip my content to outbound, it might not really be outbound in the way that most people are thinking, because what you're doing with outbound is you're getting in front of that person exactly. What if you flipped it and used your ads for outbound instead, but then the content that you were creating was used for inbound? So if you flip it that way, then um, sure, you're going out there, you're getting in front of people, you're getting paid clicks, you're seeing everything that's going on. And for me, I would consider that an outbound marketing strategy. I mean, now let's say you pair it up. Let's say you want to go and get a gig and close a deal with, um, let's say, JP Morgan Chase or something, right? So how, how are you going to go and do that? Your inbound marketing would be maybe 10 things that J.P. Morgan Chase could go and do uh, to elevate their X, Y, Z, right? You create content around that. That's your inbound marketing. Your outbound marketing is um, maybe you want to target the executives of uh, J.P. Morgan. Mm. So you create a little ad set of people who kind of fall within those ranks and you would target your ads uh, to go uh, the missing components that JP Morgan needs or JP Morgan could elevate by this and that where you're speaking directly to the executives. If you want to take it even further, you could hop on the phone and call that person's administrative assistant and go, Hey, um, I'm sure that over time you've seen this ad that I've been running on XYZ about JP Morgan and how it can help. I wanted to go and discuss this with you. Or if you want, maybe you can even add in a step in between those two and go send the person a package beforehand with maybe like um, a ton of chocolate and Mm. all the other fun stuff that people want and maybe include some of your material in there and go, hey, I sent you some material earlier. Did you have a chance to read it over? So now you have the inbound and you have the outbound kind of working together. Um, 
It depends how bad you want it, right? I, I <laughs> love, you know, um, let me show you this. <clears throat> one, I'm saying you the, the present that we do. We are going to send one to uh, Neil Patel and obviously one to you. We will ask your address. But this is one gift that, we, <laughs> yeah, this is one gift that we do to our customers. And just to anyone, like now that you're saying the gift, I remember yeah. Eric's you saying the power of doing gifts. And it's like, I don't just want to give an iPod or something. And we build, we make this. That's a unique piece of art that we send. This is like a proper canvas. And oh, that we obviously going to send one to you and everything comes because we always make a joke for our customers and uh -huh. we, say, <laughs> we always say make uh, we do outbound and you know outbound can be used for spam it's like make emails with love you know yeah. and and i love because what some of the stuff that you said and you talk about fear and i love because we are based a lot in fear uh, we make yeah. promotion because we're afraid uh, spam act or um, GDPR will, will be angry and they will close my company. And it's like, fuck, let's think about it with love. You know a lot about fear. Can you tell us a little bit how fear has, I would say, evolved you to a better learner or a different learner? So I think what we have to do is we have to kind of identify why people feel fear to begin with. And usually what happens is we have neurotransmitters going off in our head and what they're doing is saying, oh, this is scary, this is dangerous, I don't know if you should do it. And then you have this query feeling in yourself. And usually what a lot of people do is when they feel this fear, um, some people freeze up and they don't do anything and they're not able to really move forward from something like that it's not the fear of like a spider or anything but it's like the fear of going out there and pursuing your passion going out there and sharing something that you're vulnerable about going out there and making a connection with someone that you really wanted to meet like let's say you just saw maybe keanu reeves walking by and you're like oh my god it's keanu reeves you know, should I go talk to him? And you have that fear, that, that kind of fear where you kind of stop. And a lot of people will be just looking and going, oh, I missed that opportunity. I never got a chance to actually meet him. Oh, I guess I can't meet that guy from um, uh, whatever that new movie is or Matrix. <laughs> and it's like a lot of people feel this because um, we have these feelings that go off and these neurotransmitters that go fear, fear, fear. Now, uh, fear is a good thing and not a bad thing if you know how to actually use it for the right purpose. So a lot of people freeze up and a lot of people run away. Those are the two most nice. common things that people do, right? And, you know, like if you have fear and you start running away from something, what's going to really end up happening from that? You're going to miss out on the opportunity. Mm -hmm. You're going to miss out... You're going to be like, oh, like, let's say you saw Keanu and you ran the other way. You're like, oh, no, I don't know. <laughs> it's like, it just sounds ridiculous, right? But um, what fear is, is it's an indicator that you're onto something great. It's an indicator that if you go and do something, you're actually going to be happy and enjoy what's actually happening. It's an indicator that you're able to go and connect with someone else. So, like, let's say you have this burning desire to go out there and become, like, a music producer. But deep, but then you're so scared of actually doing it. You're like, what if this, what if that, what if that, what if that, and then you're stuck. Or, and you feel that you can't move forward. If you buy into that fear and go, yes, this fear, I, be I deserve it, I feel it. So what you have to kind of do is go through three different steps. One, you have to kind of recognize that fear figure out what it is, then you have to kind of face it and go and like live in those emotions. And of course, for most people, it's going to be extremely scary to do that because, you know, mm. fear is scary. You're looking the devil in their eyes. But you have to really go out there and do something about it because that fear is telling you you're onto something great. Just go and do it. Because if you go and do pursue that passion to become that music producer, guess what? Who knows? You might be Dr. Dre and you might own the school one day. Mm. I love you went to school now. <laughs> I, 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 what you're saying, it, it, I remind everyone two books. I would say the number one is Teach the Art by Leonard Kim, which we're going to share 
uh, the link. There is no affiliate links or anything, just like out of love, ditch the act. And I think you talk a lot about what you're saying and how you became what you are today. Yeah. And, and, and I think it's super important that, that, you know, what steps you had, what reflection, and, you know, being in the state that you are, which is a, it's, it's amazing. And obviously it's an influential for some mind. Congratulations, and I love it. And you explain a lot of like, do not freeze, do not run away. Fight the fear, isn't it, in a way, no? I don't know what, how you call it. It's like accept the fear in a way. Yeah, it's kind of doing something about it. Like you know that that fear is there, you know it's lingering and it's holding you back and it's making you either want to run away, freeze up or do nothing, but just go forward. Just go, oh, this you have to kind of change how you perceive that fear. Instead of saying, oh, fear, what if this is that or that's going to happen? But oh, fear, that means I'm doing the right thing. I need to move forward. I love it. I love it. And knowing that you now you've evolved, <clears throat> tell me a little bit your job at the Influence Tree and how do you generate social growth for your customers and, and consultancy for work for branding? Sure. So it's a funny story how Influence Tree kind of works. So when I was writing and I had those 10 million reads, a lot of people kept messaging me and saying, hey, Leonard, can you mentor me? Can you teach me how to do what you did? And I sat around and I said, no, I don't have time for that. I'm working full time. I'm going to school. I'm writing. How am I going to fit time to go and mentor people? But after like maybe a year of people asking, probably getting hundreds if not thousands of requests i'm like wait if people keep asking me maybe i shouldn't teach them how to do this stuff and um so what i ended up doing is i made a course that teaches people how to really position their brand get featured in the media and grow their social media following and once that course was kind of developed a lot of people said hey can you go out and actually do this for us from like venture capitalists mm -hmm. new york times best-selling authors people who worked at fortune 500 companies people who owned eight figure businesses they're like hey leonard can you do this for me i'm like yeah sure no problem and what we kind of do is um we take people down the story path because um I, i'm a true believer that, that people do people with uh are people do business with people that they know like and mm. trust and in order to know like and trust someone what do you kind of have to do you have to know them and people feel similarities sometimes um one of my clients sabine lee who owns angel hack uh when i was doing my first initial call with her her first job was at safeway I wanted to work at Albertsons for my first job, bagging groceries. She was doing my dream job as a child. There, we made an instant connection. And it's so weird how one tiny, small, little, minute detail kind mm. of changes the whole path mm. of a relationship. For Ryan, my business partner, he was a theater major and she was a theater major. So that's where they bonded. And then on top of that, like my wife used to roller skate as a kid and um, Sabine did too. And that's where they bought it. And there's all these different components in each person's story. Things that we feel are minute, things that we feel are completely ridiculous, things that we kind of overlook that are really the driving connections for how we really go out there and make, meet other people, you know, mm -hmm. and connect with them. I love, I love what you're saying because... It's kind of building rapport, but not just to build rapport to sell something. It's a, a true, honest way of connecting with human beings, which is going to make our life much easier in a way. Yeah. That's, I want to make business with, I would say, friends and people who I love. And, you know, because it's, life is easier. There is market for everyone and choosing by connections in a way. And something that, do you believe it's the universe sometimes connects you with your possible customers and, and suppliers? Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, I, I think it's kind of crazy when you kind of go out there and you reveal your whole self and that includes the good, the bad, and your version of the ugly because we've all gone through struggles. We've all gone through pain. And kind of like that fear situation, we fear going out there and sharing these struggles because we think mm. we're the only ones who felt it. But when we go out there and we share this with the others, um, guess what? I'm not the only one who failed. Um, in fact, almost every single person in the world has yeah. failed. Just people don't talk about it. 
But mm -hmm. if I go out there and I share my failure first and I go and talk to you, you're more open about sharing your failure second because guess what? I, I take the first step. Mm -hmm. And that creates a bond between us where you feel more safe and able mm -hmm. to connect with me at a more vulnerable level. And the mm -hmm. more vulnerable that we can get together, guess what? Then we become friends, yeah, we yeah, hang yeah. out, we go have drinks together, we do business together, and everything works. <laughs> yeah, and you trust, and then you like, and you know, you know, isn't it? Yeah. Which I love exactly. the three words. It's some, some three words that I will make sure we result it because it's important. Just for everyone to know, um, if anyone wants to contract you on the Influence Tree, how does it work? Can anyone become a customer of yours or how does it work? Uh, so we have three different tiers of services. One's a course, online course. It's either $99 a month or I think $26. Where a can month. I buy it? Um, it's at influencetree.com. Okay. Uh, the other things that we do is consulting, and then we also do a done for you package. A done for you package is kind of around six figures a year, so it's pretty expensive, and that's kind of more for the people who run uh, more solid businesses mm -hmm. or they have a company budget that they could take from, and they could do RFPs or SOWs with their work. One, and can you tell us some of your biggest customers if you can share? It, <laughs> if you can. The ones who can um, share. Sure. So uh, one of the New York Times bestselling authors is uh, Keith Ferrazzi. He's the author of Never Eat Alone, Who's Got Your Back. He worked on the uh, biggest automobile turnaround in the uh, mm -hmm. century. And he's worked on a lot of big projects. Another one, uh, Joseph Bradley, uh, Cisco Vice President of IoT. Uh, so a Fortune uh, 500 company in there. Uh, Sabina Lee, she owns Angel Hack, which is an eight-figure uh, business in the technology field. And then there's a handful of others. Like wow, I love it. There. Congratulations. Yeah. How long has been going the agency for? Uh, so I think, um, so I incorporated <coughs> I incorporated it mid 2015, but then, you know, when you incorporate things, you don't actually do stuff. So um, I'd say about a year after that. So I'd say mid 2016 was Wonderful. when we really got started. Three, four yeah. years going good. Wonderful. Yeah. Also, I, um, I know that you did a lead generation business. Hmm? How was it? Was it hard to stay the lead generation? Oh. It took so long to figure out. I'm like, this is painful. <laughs> well, you know, because you didn't have to find that lead, man. That's the problem. <laughs> you know, it would change your life, you know. Yeah. I had, you know, my last business was a lead generation. As a lead, today, just like a, a little pool for finding emails. But um, oh my god, lead generation, the customer finding the leads, making sure to find. Did you, you have to generate customers for your customers? Oh uh, yeah, basically oh. the leads. We did uh, old school style, the telephone style, passing from it. the phone to the phone. <laughs> I know, the boiler room, and you had to listen. The, you, you know, I went to see, um, what, um, what's this guy? The Wolf of Wall Street. We went to see it in London. And, you know, did you do a lot of cold calling and pushy and stuff like that? Was it you uh, lead or you just you had to give the lead and that's it? Oh, I had to get the people, organize it, structure it, put it together, get people to actually answer the phones. I'm like, I'm not answering this phone. How many, <laughs> how, how big the company grew at the time? Uh, let's see, I don't remember. Uh, we had six people answering, six to eight people answering the phones. Good. Uh, you know, they weren't making great money, <laughs> but yeah. I think they... <laughs> I think they were getting two to three leads an hour, so yeah. Okay, this, uh, it's okay. It's a good way, and um, I love it because now you are in the stage. You are, I think, it's fifty seventh on the last list I saw for the marketing best influencers in the U.S., which is it's amazing. I mean, we can't think that it's the U.S. and it's a lot of market. Would you give some tips to the audience on how to become? one of the top marketers in the US like you are now? Oh, sure. So when you kind of look at things, most people go and they market a brand. And while there's nothing wrong with marketing a brand, uh, my friend Joe Martin, uh, what he did is he ran the same ad with the same collateral, same image, same everything. 
from the uh, Adobe account. Adobe is a Fortune 500 large billion dollar corporation. Mm -hmm. And he ran it from that account. And then he also ran the same ad from his personal account. Um, uh, guess how many more clicks the uh, personal account got from the brand account? Mm, I love it. And if you had to change something today, um, what would you change? I want to say in the evolution that you did on the influence tree, what would you make different if you could do it again? Can you repeat that? Yeah. And um, on the influence tree, on the business, how it's been growing, what would you change? What would you improve? I don't know. Um, my email funnel. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's a good one. You know, it, it, for I think everyone everyone email. I'm taking a lot of notes. I think it's beautiful. We're going to share everything with everyone. And the next thing is one book that you recommend and it cannot be beat the act. Sure. So uh, I'm going to go with Limitless by Laurel. Limitless. Laura. Like the film. La yeah. Laura <laughs> o Oting Gasser. <laughs> is, it, is, is it actually a book, Limitless? Yeah, it's a yellow love cover. It. I love <laughs> it. You know, I watched the film like six times. I started taking nootropics after that film. I was like, fuck. Oh, I, I, I don't take it anymore. It's just like I had to test them. I was like, yeah, I test Adderall. I test like Modifony. I, I, do, I, do, I was taking everything to see. It's like, I just didn't like it. You know, I always say I, I wrote about my experience on nootropics, which is not my thing. You know, it works for many people. But, you know, Limitless really, I'd seen the series that they do in Netflix, I've seen, but yeah. I didn't know it was a book, which I, I love it. Oh, it's not the same book. <laughs> oh, <okay. laughs> oh, <no>. <laughs> <laughs> but it's a great movie. I did a great movie. Okay, tell me about Limitless, this book. Oh my God. <laughs> so uh, basically uh, they cover four different C's and those four C's are like consonants and the four things that you really need to go out there and discover to actually be limitless because if we go out into the world we have ideas being shared with us all the time but sometimes we just have to block everyone else out and really get to hone in who we are mm, i love it okay and can you share with everyone one uh growth hack for your company and one growth hack for your personal life okay whatever you can share <laughs> from you know it's just like um in personal life sometimes some people say audiobooks two times faster sometimes say uh cold shower in the morning or meditation uh okay life hack and a business hack um life hack watch as much tv as possible really life hack is that a life hack wow yeah no, you don't even know. Do you know how much stuff you can really relate to from TV and extract and put into your business? If you're a marketer, you should be watching TV because it, all the best I, ideas come from TV. I love that because I have that with films. Like, I love films. Yeah. I'm crazy. Not TV because sometimes I, t I like films. Actually, films. Not Netflix series and stuff. I think films to me really. And yeah, TV is good. Okay, what about uh, work hack? I think it would be the same, isn't it? Uh, it could be. <laughs> Watch yeah. my TV. Right. Um, for I think business though, I think it's getting as vulnerable as possible and sharing the truth that are too true to mm. share. Mm, that's an amazing recommendation and being honest to yourself and to the audience is yeah. always the best. Leonard, man, it's been a pleasure to have you in the show. And we, we, because the thing is, we try to find someone in the US to print it like this and send it to you, okay? The same with Nip Patel. If you were in Spain, easily we send it, but we we're going to make sure you have one soon. I would say in a few weeks. And Leonard, it's been a pleasure to have you here. Uh, please, everyone, go and check Ditch the Art. Also, um, Influence Tree. And if you want to see Leonard, leonardkin.com to get his course. Leonard, um, what's the, way, the best way anyone can reach you? Uh, you can either reach out to me on Twitter at Mr. Leonard Kim, or you could also email me at hello at LeonardKim.com. Wonderful. Here you are. Thank you very much, Nona. Anytime, Gerard.
Thank you. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye bye. Appreciate it. You too. Bye bye.